What's up guys? Rich here from Spray Black Studios and today we're going to take a look at everybody's favourite sneaky emo marines and give them the grim dark treatment. The 19th Legion, also known as the Raven Guard, or the biggest emos in the 41st millennium. Really, what better chapter can we have to give the Grim Dark treatment to? After the success of my Grim Dark Black Templar video, I thought I'd take a shot at another one of my favourite Space Marine chapters and give the Sneaky Beakies, the Raven Guard, a nice gritty Grim Dark paint scheme. Like most of the other chapters in the Games Workshop painting style, the Raven Guard colour scheme is shown as being very clean, very crisp. Not what you'd expect from a chapter whose combat doctrine revolves around sneaking around in the shadows. So like the Black Templar video, I'm going to go for something a little bit more realistic and slightly more gritty. And I'm going to change up my techniques a little bit and try my hand at a slightly different weathering method. Now you didn't click on this video to watch me sit and talk, so Let's get to painting. So then, here I have this kit-bashed Raven Guard veteran. Made using a sprinkling of Forge World Horus Heresy pieces and Raven Guard upgrade bits on an Assault Intercessor body. To start it off, he's going to need a nice undercoat, and for this I'll use Vallejo Surface Primer Black. I love the Vallejo Surface Primer, as not only can I apply it with my airbrush from the comfort of my office chair, but it's also really hard wearing too. And the great thing about the primer on this model is it will not only work as our primer, but it's also going to effectively form the base coat too. Now if you've seen my Black Templar video, then you'll no doubt recognise some of the steps I'm going to take to paint the black. Starting off with a heavy Xenophil dry brush of Citadel's Dawnstone. This will start putting down some of those highlights in for me, and also give some perspective of where the light is coming from. Just remember to keep the majority of those brush strokes coming from the top of the model downwards to really build up that zenithal effect. Keeping that dry brush out, I'll continue building those highlights up. Firstly, by a lighter dry brush layer of Celestra Grey, and then with a super soft dry brush layer of Althorn Grey to add in the top end highlights. Now as you can see this model is definitely grey currently, so I'll need to bring it back down so it reads as black. To do this I'll use multiple coats of Army Painted Dark Tone Wash, which has a pretty similar effect to Nuln Oil, and will bring that armour back down to a nice matte black. Now let's work on some metallics. Using Vallejo's Metal Colour Magnesium as a base coat, I'll layer it all over the ribbon, the claws and the aquila on his chest. To highlight this I'll apply a mix of metal colour magnesium and metal colour aluminium in a stippling motion to all of those metallic areas. This will give a slightly irregular looking highlight and will give them more of a look of well worn and slightly scratched metal. To push this a little bit further, I'll then do exactly the same with pure metal colour aluminium on just the edges and the tips. To give a little more depth and contrast to these metallics, I will use a little bit of Nuln Oil just to draw into those recesses and give us a little bit more definition. Now for all the white areas, I want to build up quite a nice warm off-white colour. The usual whites would definitely feel too cold on this guy, so to start with the base coat of Rhinox Hide will work perfectly. To build up towards that off-white, I'll then use Rakar Flesh and try and pick out all of the raised areas of what will soon be the white areas, trying to leave that Rhinox Hide in the shadowed areas to give us that definition in the detail. Now it's quite a nice cream colour, but I want to push it up more to an off-white. So the next layer is a layer of Pallid Witch Flesh, applied very carefully. 
Again, trying to pick out the higher areas of that detailing so as to leave some of the more browny tones into the shadows. As tempting as it is to paint this guy completely monochromatic, I feel I do need to add in a little splash of colour to the scheme. So I'm going to go with a nice red shoulder pad trim of the Raven Guard 3rd Company. With a base coat of Gal Vorbach and then a highlight layer of corn red, we can get a nice solid red that is definitely not going to overpower the rest of the model. So all of the base colours are now in, but it's not quite time to start the weathering process just yet. Instead, I'll grab out the Dawnstone again, and being very careful, I'll add in a load of small scratches and scuffs to the armour panels, just to reinforce the idea that he has been in an active war zone for a little while, and his armour has picked up its fair share of scrapes and dings. Although I'm using quite a large brush for this, it does keep a lovely small point to it, and this coupled with some nicely thinned down paint means I can do some nice small scratches rather than it applying in blobs or having the brush struggle to draw across the surface. And now, finally, it's time to go properly grimdark. Starting off with some Nihilac Oxide, I'll add some patina into those metal tones. Whilst normally this patina forms on copper, bronze or brassy metals, it does add a really nice dimension and some other subtle colours into this scheme. Just be real careful not to go overboard on this and just use it to pick out mainly the recessed areas like the joints of the claws or the recesses of the aquila. To throw some dirt and grime onto this model though, we're going to use some weathering pigments. Starting off with the Vallejo Old Rust, I'll apply this pretty liberally over all the model using a large brush. Don't worry if it looks like you're laying down too much at this point as we will do a bit of tidying up afterwards. This is a pretty messy step so make sure you're on a surface you can clean easily or put something down first. Now these weathering pigments are another great way of adding in some other tones to your colour scheme. Whilst this orange really does look quite bright currently, it won't stay quite so shocking or so eye-catching. So using a clean, dry, dry brush, I'll then give it a quick brush in just to remove some of the pigment where it's built up too much. And then use a little bit of white spirit, I'll fix these pigments down. The white spirit will run with the details of the model and may cause the pigments to disappear to your eye. But don't worry though, they are still there and once that white spirit dries, they will return. Be careful here though, although the white spirit stops the pigments from sitting loose and blowing away, it does allow you to be able to manipulate them with a brush, so they can be easily pushed out of position here if you are too heavy handed. Many people do worry about putting white spirit onto their miniatures, but if you're only painting with acrylic paints you should be okay. White spirit works to break down oil based paints, so your nice water based citadel and Vallejo paints should remain untouched. Now once that white spirit is dried, I'll also go through the same process with some carbon black pigment. Before doing anything else now, you need to let all of this dry off properly for a few minutes. So I advise finding a much more productive way of passing the time than I chose. Now, I wasn't overly happy with the off-white raven symbols as I felt they needed a little bit more definition to make that detail really show up. So adding in a wash of Agrax Earthshade will bring that detail in right back out again. So I'm almost coming to a conclusion now with this guy. There are just a couple of bits left to do. Firstly, let's take a look at that skin tone. Now Raven Guard in the lore are generally depicted as having very bright, almost pure white skin tones. To go pure white on a model like this would definitely look too jarring, but I will take a little bit of a different tact with it. Starting off with a layer of Rakar Flesh as a base coat, and then layering in some highlights of Pallid Witch Flesh, I'll start to build up that real pallid looking skin tone. With the addition of a little bit of watered down Drooky Violet, I'll be able to add a little bit of colour into the recesses and then 
to stop it from looking too vampiric, I'll add a touch of warmth back into the skin using some Reichland Flesh Shade. To finish it off, I'll go back to the Pallid Witch Flesh and pick out the real top highlights across areas like his forehead, his nose and the top of his cheeks. With the pose of the model and the base that I've gone for, I really wanted the jump pack to look like it was igniting. So as a last final touch, I'm going to add a little bit of a lighting effect to the exhausts. Using my airbrush, I'll apply Vallejo's French Blue very carefully to the insides of the exhaust. I'll try and cover the majority of the inside of the exhaust vents with this, as this is going to be our glow. Adding in some electric blue to the mix, I'll then pick out a smaller area with this lighter colour, just to give the impression of an energy source glowing. To make it stand out even more, I'll keep building up that brightness, and a layer of pure electric blue will be applied to an even smaller area. Throw in a little bit of white to the mix for the real centre of the exhaust and we're all done. And there we have it, a grim, dark, sneaky emo marine. So when doing the Grimdark Black Templar video, I knew immediately I was going to have to give this a shot with the Raven Guard. One of my favourite chapters, or legions, in the game, I've already got quite a sizeable Raven Guard army, but unfortunately most of it is painted up in the traditional Games Workshop style. And I will be honest, painting this guy has genuinely got me considering just throwing a load of weathering powders all over that army. Now after the success of my other Grimdark videos, I will be doing some more chapters. So if you've got any suggestions of ones you want to see me attempt, please sling them down in the comments down below. I do already have a couple planned and I've got to be honest, one of them could be pretty special. As you may know, I am a member of the Chillin' War Gamers Network. The network itself has expanded quite a bit recently with some awesome new channels joining the fold. Channels such as the Immersive Worldcrafter, Beard Clipper and Crazy Crafters, amongst others, have given us a huge range of content of all different varieties. I've thrown a link down in the description down below, so please check them out. If you've enjoyed this video and want more, then please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and by subscribing to the channel. That way you won't miss my future uploads. And remember guys, if all else fails, spray it black and start again.